Hello, well, this is Rhythmia, and I wanted to talk about Limbo and his upcoming rework. See, Limbo is my main Warframe, and it's very important and dear to me that some changes are about to be made. Um, I'm a little excited about this, more so than I usually am about a rework like this. So, of course, I have to make sure that I put my opinion out there. <clears throat> I think um, another reason why I want to do this is because the way I look at it, my perspective is a little different than the average YouTuber. When I see other YouTubers using uh, Limbo, uh, I, I notice that they may not be using him quite the way that he's intended. It, I see them making certain mistakes or, or making him out to be not as much as he really is or not as good as he really is. And I think he's already misunderstood. I, I, I don't think he needs more uh, YouTubers with a, 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 a lot of voice trying to sort of propagate that conception um, I think it's important that he kind of gets a voice on his side and that's what I want it to be so I, I have a little bit of a high stake in this rework as well because I don't want the rework to make Limbo into a bad player um, a bad Warframe I'm pretty sure a lot of people already think he's a bad Warframe but I, I, I don't want him to be legitimately bad because of this rework um, but I think so far what I see everything looks good so let's talk about Limbo, how he is before the rework, and, and how he's, he might be after the rework. So, pre-rework, pre -rework, uh, his abilities are as follows. Uh, you have Banish, uh, which will send enemies into the rift, do a little bit of damage to them. It also sends allies into the rift, and while they're in the rift, they regain uh, two energy per second. Sending allies and enemies into the rift, I'm sorry, using Banish on allies who are already in the rift, and, and enemies will bring them back into the material plane now we'll talk about the rift and the material plane a little bit later because those are going to be very important to the discussion about limbo uh, but let's move on to the rest of his abilities so there's rift walk his second ability and that sends limbo into the rift and if you press it again it, it'll send them out um, this ability takes a little time to charge so it's not something you typically want to do you know too late you want to do it before enemies are shooting you not after rift surge is his third ability and it increases his damage while he's in the rift simple stuff uh, but we'll get into that a little bit more in depth a little later too cataclysm is his fourth ability and that creates an area of effect where anything that enters is sent into the rift and um, when it collapses, it also does damage to anything that's in the bubble um, as it collapses. You can collapse it earlier by pressing the number four button again. So um, his passive ability is very important and I think it might be overlooked by some. He gets an increase to his movement speed, reload speed, and his switch weapon speed while he's inside the rift. And this is just like a, a meager upgrade. This is actually quite powerful and I use this in order to do a lot of damage to enemies in the rift. Um, you also gain energy while in the rift. It's not truly a passive because all Warframes gain that energy. That's more a property of the rift than more than like a limbo passive. Um, so uh, there's that. So next, let's talk about the um, rift mechanics. Uh, the rift mechanics are <clears throat> a little hard to understand, especially if you're not a limbo player, especially if you're new to limbo and it, it turns a lot of people off because if you don't understand the rift it looks like just a hindrance it looks like like de why would you make something like this but it's important to understand what the rift is and how it can be used before you really appreciate it um, so let's talk about the rift the rift is the rift plane is an alternate plane of existence between the material world and the void and objects in the rift can be seen and heard but they can't really be interacted with otherwise so enemies um, that are in the rift can only shoot you if you're in the rift too and enemies that are in a material plane can only shoot you if you're in the material plane too uh, you can't damage each other from one plane to the other uh, however warframe abilities are unique and they can actually pass through the rift damaging enemies on both sides regardless of what plane of existence the Warframe is in. Uh, Warframes also gain energy while in the Rift, but their vision becomes impaired. Uh, so there's a little bit of a give and take uh, with, with that. You can think of the Rift as an alternate 
dimension, but in reality, it's more like a space just outside of our dimension, not truly a, a whole nother dimension. After all, you can still see everything that's in the rift. Limbo is all about manipulating this space to his advantage. Um, he can choose who he wants to go in the rift and who he wants to come out the rift and he can choose what space he wants in the rift and he can increase damage that's done to enemies in the rift and when it's done correctly it's extremely powerful and tactical but if it's done without skill it can actually hurt Limbo more than help and it can definitely hurt his teammates more than help and I think that's the main complaint that people have with Limbo. He, Limbo uh, it comes with a steep learning curve because the rift mechanic is something that's not you know straightforward it's something that takes a lot of strategy and tactical skill and it's not just straightforward like press four and nuke everything in the area magic in the battlefield is important and so you don't want to forget which enemies are in and out the rift because that can be very detrimental to you and your allies um, also you should know that if you have been sent into the rift by a limbo, you're not stuck there. You can just roll to exit the, the, the rift. Um, so in case you get stuck with a troll limbo, I acknowledge that there are some trolls out there. So let's talk about rift. Um, well, let's talk about some strategies that limbo has at his disposal because I think if you understand the strategies and how the rift should be used, then maybe you can appreciate the rift a little bit better. So let's talk about what you don't want to do as a limbo. You don't want to neglect the passive buff to speed and reload speed. It's going to come in very much handy. Um, you don't want to neglect the energy regeneration either. That's going to let you use abilities almost indefinitely. Not, you know, infinitely, but almost infinitely. You also don't want to lose track of what enemies are in the rift with you. Because remember, he's pretty squishy. Nothing can damage him when he's in the rift. But if he sends some enemy in the rift with him and, and forget that he's there, he can get shot down in like two shots. So you want to be very careful about how you, you manipulate the rift. You also don't want to banish or cataclysm allies haphazardly because you, you'll be looked at as um, somewhat of a troll if you do that. Um, most players kind of don't like you if you do that. Um, as an example. This is an example of when I was a troll. I have a friend that no matter how many times I tell him that you can't attack an enemy in the rift, he keeps trying to do it. And so I, I've kind of had a little fun at his expense, banishing like the, salt, the last enemy in a defense mission and, and watching him try to kill it endlessly <laughs> for, for the duration of banish. Um, he just never gives up. He keeps trying to attack it with his sword, with his skana. Um, you know, never realizing that if he just used a Warframe ability, he could take it out easy, but he doesn't do that. He'll unload his entire clip, he'll attack it with Skana, and it's fun to watch. Um, and you can do that to your friends, but don't jump into like a, a public match and do that because people are really, they're going to hate you. Um, my, my friend can never hate me, so it's okay if I do it to him. Um, you don't want to neglect Rift Surge, by the way. Uh, it's better than it looks. It actually is not as big of a buff as maybe Banshee buff to damage or Chroma's buff to damage. But there's no drawbacks. Like, you just use it and it's there. Whereas Banshee, you have to aim correctly and Chroma, you have to take damage. Uh, Rift's uh, damage bonus doesn't really come with any cost except for the cost of energy. So make sure you use it a as much as you can. Um, also, I see a lot of players do this, especially on YouTube. Actually, this made me want to make this video so I can tell people not to do this because I see uh, the main YouTubers <laughs> do this and don't pop Cataclysm in the middle of a bunch of enemies. If you've got like 20 enemies in an area, you don't want to pop a max range Cataclysm in that area because guess what? Now you're in a rift with 30 enemies that want you dead and they're and while you're doing your stupid animation they're shooting you you'll probably be dead before you finish the animation that is definitely not what you want to do using rift walk is not going to get you out of that situation because you're already in the rift so just don't do it i'll explain to you how to use cataclysm properly later just remember don't use cataclysm on a bunch of enemies that are right next to you now here are here are things that you do want to do 
you want to banish enemies that are high priority targets like bombards or heavy and as an example um, one time during a, a, a mission I think it was a sortie um, there was a bursa that was giving my teammates a lot of trouble he was hard to aim at because he was moving erratically and um, <clears throat> And he, and he kept knocking down and stunning my teammates. Uh, so with I, I, I activated Rift Surge, I, I approached the uh, Bursa from the Rift, banished him real quick, and shot him with two Tigris shots real quick, and then unbanished him. And um, basically, he kind of, I, I don't know how robots bleed out, but he kind of bleeded out <laughs> after that, after those two shots. And, and I took him out rather easily while the rest of my team was just struggling to get rid of him. So. Limbo can be a useful ally if, if used correctly. You want to also banish allies that have high damage warfare abilities. So an example would be <clears throat> uh, something like a Ember. Ember ability, World on Fire, can do a lot of damage, but eventually you run out of energy. However, if you cast Banish on uh, the player, uh, they get that passive 2 energy per second buff that helps their channel ability last longer, which is a, another point I wanted to bring up. Most of the time when a Warframe is channeling abilities, their energy regeneration is canceled. So the energy regeneration they get from mods and from the um, Xenuric school of focus usually stops, but the energy regeneration they get from Limbo doesn't stop. So they can benefit from that and because Warframe abilities can jump across the rift, they can feel free to damage enemies with their abilities without fear of actually being hurt by enemies themselves. So they get that invulnerability as well as that energy regeneration. So that can be very helpful for a Warframe like Mesa or Ember or Excalibur with its Exalted Blade. Those, those are really good Warframes to banish. Um, <clears throat> as long as they are aware of how the rift mechanics work, you know. You don't want to banish a, 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 an Excalibur and he's just sitting there trying to unload his entire clip from his gun. Just tell him to use his Exalted Blade. Um, another thing uh, that, that's worth noticing is uh, you want to pop a Cataclysm from a distance. Not uh, pop a Cataclysm right where you are. If you do it right where you are enemies that are in the immediate area are going to just shoot you dead instantly but if you sit back like go somewhere that's a little bit secluded um, but use cataclysm on a group of enemies that are a little distance away those enemies will enter the rift but you'll be safe outside the bubble now you can still use rift walk to enter the rift and shoot them but you don't have to actually be in the bubble to damage them you just have to be in the rift so I see a lot of people trying to make it work. Like that's one of the people's main concern, his main complaint. How do you use Cataclysm? Cataclysm just kills you, it makes you vulnerable. Well yeah, it will if you're in the Cataclysm bubble with the enemy, but if you're outside it, if you're from without, you can actually damage from within. Or you can even set it by a doorway, and as enemies pass through the doorway and enter the bubble, you shoot them. Or if you put it next to an objective, and as enemies approach the objective, you shoot them. If you can use it almost like a trap, um, but you don't want to be inside the actual bubble when you do it. Uh, speaking of the Cataclysm bubble, you want to use negative range mods if you're going to use the Cataclysm on a defense objective. Because if it's too big, what you'll do is you'll either encapsulate your allies so they can't attack enemies as they approach, or if it's big enough, it might even hit the, the enemies too, and the enemies are in the rift with the defense target, well that's not very much protection is it, if they're both in the rift. Um, so you want to use a low range uh, cataclysm for something like that. Um, but you can use medium or large uh, cataclysm sites for something like an interception. Uh, because, you know, just like how you can't activate consoles while in the rift, neither can the enemy. So if you pop a cataclysm on interception, the enemies won't be able to interact with the consoles and it'll make capturing uh, the interception tower harder for them. They can still do it, but it'll be harder. It'll take them a little more time to get it done. So <clears throat> that's just some ideas. Um, you also, if you're a limbo, and this should kind of come without saying, considering the type of weapon, 
well, I think when Limbo was released, he came with the Opticore, which is a really high damage weapon. But Limbo really excels uh, when he has a high damage weapon. Um, as opposed to something with low damage, you want to use something with high damage to take out the enemy in one or two shots. Because uh, one of the best strategies is bringing an enemy into the rift with you, taking him out. Um, which is hard to do if you bring a, weak, a weaker weapon. So a Tigris, a Lex Prime, an Opticore, a bow like um like a Paris Prime or um, <clears throat> something like that are, are, are good weapons to use. Uh, you also, I think it would be good to use enemy radar. A lot of people think enemy radar is a waste of time and you could save that slot for something that's more useful. Um, but I find that it, it really prevents me from being snuck up on because Limbo, uh, Squishy Frame if he gets snuck up on, it, does, it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to die in one hit. So you have to be aware of where the enemies are. So you can learn, so you can know to, hey, there's an enemy around the corner. Maybe I want to, you know, jump into the rift. Or maybe I want to aim at that corner so as soon as he turns, he gets shot in the face. Um, or maybe you want to know that there's an enemy behind you. Enemy radar is a lot more helpful than, uh, than people think it is. Uh, so my strategy, what I do is I kind of do a lot of what I just described. Uh, I use the rift to banish high priority targets and damage them right away. Um, when there are no high priority targets, I just damage, you know, regular units. Uh, if enemies are perfectly lined up and I have a weapon with punch through, I will jump out of the rift, shoot the weapon off, damage all those enemies and jump back in the rift real quick. Um, but I spend most of my time in the rift. The rift is your best friend. You want to be in the rift as much as you want. Make a uh, rift walk your best friend. Uh, when needing to protect an area, I pop a cataclysm, but from a distance. And I use a high precision weapon and rift surge in order to deal in damage to enemies inside the bubble. I don't actually pop the bubble on my location, or at least not if I can help it. And some other things that you can do to cheese the mission, I don't know if they're bugs or not, but during the Kayla the Thane fight, uh, when she's trying to nuke you, you can pop a Cataclysm and all the Warframes that are inside there will not get damaged by the nuke. Um, if you're doing a rescue mission, you can banish the rescue target so that it can't be killed by enemies. Uh, if you're doing a sortie defense, you can banish the defense target um, so it can't get killed by enemies. Um, and I, I, this one, I really don't know if it's a bug, but you know that one Orican Moon Trial where you have to withstand damage from the laser beams? It turns out if I banish someone who's standing on the plate, it'll actually protect them uh, from the laser beams, but they can still pass the trial. I don't know if that's a bug or if it was intended that way, but if it is a bug, I, you know, I guess you want to take advantage of it <laughs> while you still can. Uh, you want to nuke the weaker enemies with your cataclysm. I know nuking with cataclysm is not really the best strategy and most of the time it doesn't work but if you're on a low level mission for an alert or if you're fighting low level enemies nuke the place. You could take out a lot of enemies quickly that way. It's easier than banishing them one by one. Um, also very important use a sentinel with vacuum to hold your loot for you while you're in the rift. Um, without that, you're probably going to miss out on a lot of loot. So it's almost essential to have that as a limbo. Now, um, because I guess I guess I should say this. Um, you can't pick up loot while in the rift because it's in a different plane as you. A lot of people say that's stupid and I, I kind of understand how that is stupid, but I kind of understand why they did that too. So. You know, I'm neither here nor there with it. As long as you have a Sentinel with Vacuum, it really shouldn't matter. He'll he'll take care of everything for you. Now, post rework limbo. Um, what what are the rework proposed changes? And I have to say, nothing is set in stone. So what I'm about to say might turn out to be a lie when limbo actually gets released. You might be listening to me now, thinking that's a complete and total lie. He's not like that. Well, I wrote this. I, I did this video before the release, so things might have changed. But so far, it looks like Banish is going to now be an area of effect instead of just banishing one target. Uh, so that's good. I've always wanted to be able to banish more than one target. So target. So I, I really like that change. Um, instead of Rift Walk, your number two is going to be a um, a stop time. 
Um, they're calling it stasis. They might change the name. But for right now, when you press number two, it stops time for all enemies and projectiles that are in the rift. Meaning you get a little bit more CC with Limbo, which is one thing I really wanted with Limbo. He had like zero CC before, so this should help out a huge amount. Uh, so now that his number two stops time, instead of pressing number two to enter the rift, you're going to use a roll to enter the rift. And his roll animation is changed into more of a dash. So they're calling this new ability Rift Dash, um, which I actually like because that opens up room for you to have more abilities that, you know, do more damage. Speaking of inability that does that does more damage, number three, I don't remember what they're calling it. I don't know if they gave it a name yet actually, but their number three, they said is, I think it's still a work in progress, but f for the way that the dev stream the, the, described it, it's kind of like Molecular Prime where um, enemies that are killed after they've been, had the number three used on them will release energy or damage that will affect enemies that are outside the rift. So it kind of adds a little synergy whereas you can bring, you can isolate targets in the rift but you can still do damage outside the rift without actually interacting with the material plane. And, and I, I think that's really nice because you know, there's nothing I hate more than having to jump out the rift to attack enemies that are in the material plane. Um, the number four cataclysm, they say is going to stay mostly the same, but they're going to add like a stagger or a stun to it, um, which I think will help out a lot of people, especially the ones who insist on popping cataclysm on enemies right next to them. At least the stagger gives them a little time to react so they don't instantly die. I still think it's a bad idea, but... Um, you know, it does make it a little better. So, as far as strategies go for the post rework limbo, you know, this is still new, it's still in the works. Things are probably gonna change. So I can't say a whole lot now. I probably, maybe I'll make a video after he gets reworked. Uh, but as it is now, I think a lot of the old strategies still remain for him with small changes. And I think you can add a few more new strategies too. Like for instance, now his banish can bring more enemies into the rift. Uh, instead of having to banish and assassinate one enemy at a time, maybe you could banish and knock down five at a time, pull out a pistol, rift surge, and ooh, there's no more rift surge, but pull out a pistol and just, you know, take them out or finish, use finisher on them. Um, and, and if there's too many enemies to handle, if you can't finish them all before they knock out of it, you know, use your stasis and, and freeze them. Um, so it shouldn't be a, a problem. And then finish them off like that. Um, another thing I just thought of, and maybe we'll come up with more, more strategies later, but one strategy that I thought of that sounds really exciting to me, and I hope it works, um, is a synergy between his, his one, his two, his three, and his, pass, his passive role, uh, which is basically this. Step one, first, you have to banish some enemies. Just banish one or two here and there. Step two, freeze them with your your second ability. And then step three, use your third ability, the molecular prime type ability on them. Uh, step four, you wanna set up some projectiles so that um, when you press the number two again to unfreeze time, those projectiles will all kill those enemies instantly all at the same time. And then uh, step Five, you want to wait for more enemies to approach because you know their friends are gonna get mad and they're gonna run at you and say hey you know come at me bro but you know you're just gonna sit there and watch them try to attack you because you're in, in the rift anyway and can't get hurt but as they pass by their buddies that you froze in time that's when you step six unfreeze time and watch those enemies die when those enemies die they set off a chain reaction damaging the enemies outside of the rift that were trying to attack you uh, basically kind of using the old allies as a trap um, i see that as not only practical but a lot of fun to do i think i'm gonna have a lot of fun doing it um, but you know the only way to know is to get your hands on it and try it and it hasn't been released yet so we'll see anyway i think i've rambled on long enough probably too long way too long um, but I hope that kind of gives you a different perspective on Limbo on his rework and what kind of 
change is to expect. I'm glad to, you know, share my opinion on things. And uh, I can't wait to see how this work out. So I guess until the rework is released, ciao.